But let's now hear from a girl, um, a lady, a lady um, who worked in the Mawako restaurant and a story that she's had to tell, which has gotten very many people angry. Let's hear Evelyn Boache. It was on Sunday. I went to work. So after the rain stopped, I was at my department. And one supervisor called me and I went. He said, go and help this girl to blend the fresh pepper because pressure is inside. And I said, okay. So I told my colleague at Rice that this supervisor has sent me, so I'm coming. So I went to the department. So when I was blending the this thing, the blender was making go 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 go. So I I have finished with the first one, doing the second one. All of a sudden, Mr. Jihad appears, insulting me, shouting on me, calling me all sorts of names. That I don't know that I'm destroying the blender. Don't I have sense? And I said, Mr. Jihad, it's just fresh pepper. So what? So what? Then he took the blender. What is this? What is this? I said, Mr. Jihad, it's fresh pepper. Oh, I could open my mouth again. The guy has hold my head and put like this, put my face inside the blender. And when I'm trying to push myself from the blender, the pepper inside split into my eyes and my face. And the, all the workers said, ah, Mr. Jihad. Then he started shouting, leave my face, leave my face. Shalamunta, shalamunta. So I was like, I couldn't say anything. All I could do is cry. I was sharing tears. So I went to changing room to change myself and come. I changed my uniform and put my home attire. So I stepped out. After washing my face with water, I stepped out to come home. So one girl went and told Ali. So Ali came in and said, supervisor, a Ghanaian supervisor, came in and said, he won't let me go. I should sit down first for him to go and ask Jihad to what happened. He said, okay. So I sat down there <laughs> from four o'clock to 10. Yeah, at that moment when he did that, people were there, so I was like, he have disgraced me. I don't know, like, when I sit down to picture this and remember it, I still cry because I didn't know what I did. Like. You should have allowed me to do something. Okay, so, and that's uh, Evelyn Boache. Um, then, uh, that video you, you saw was by <coughs> City TV. City TV, they, pro they spoke to her in that interview. Now, let's hear <coughs> again, uh, after the accused person, Jihad Shaban, had been taken to the process and taken to court and uh, denied bail, um, a contrary side of the story, as put out by one of his lawyers. Was it in the, when the um, pepper was in the blender, or where? Could the face have entered the blender? Those are some of the things. Sometimes issues come, and you have to ask so that you get the correct facts. You just take the information and incite everybody against. You see, we are people where we have to also look at individuals who commit crime by themselves and not to generalize because the way we do our things if we put people in groups and say they are all criminals is that fair you told the court he's a Ghanaian. yes he is and the company is a Ghanaian company too his ankles that you see with fair colors are Ghanaian. the incident that happened has been rep misrepresented What's the truth? what are the facts the facts as we have it now, the fact is that there was a splash of pepper into the face of the lady. It cannot be intentional. It cannot be intentional. It cannot be intentional. You understand? And where? If, and have you bothered to find out whether the following day the girl went to work? The following day the girl went to work. He when the incident happened, he was on the night shift. The following day, 7 a.m., she was at work.
Well, so <clears throat> that's uh, Augustine Asafu Ejei um, representing uh, the accused in court. Now, um, as you know, the gender minister visited the premises and, you know, uh, pledged her support and actually suggested that uh, if certain things were not done right, the company would be shut down. <clears throat> the labor minister was also there and also um, actually made an order for a week for the Labor Department to produce a report on the, on the operations of the entity at Abelimpe. And we are talking about their branch at Abelimpe. They have uh, several branches uh, in the city and beyond uh, Accra. So uh, that's where we are now. We, there's, there's a group actually that's uh, running a petition. Um, as of, I think by Wednesday or so, they had over 2,000 people who were signing onto the petition, uh, asking for closure of the company, uh, deportation. I've heard them speak about a number of things. Um, so <coughs> let's start, and I'd like to start with you, um, uh, Roxon. Um, what do you say? Of course, this uh, is bringing up yeah. an issue that is allowing the entire nation to discuss how you know, people are treated in various uh, employments. Uh, Sam, I... First of all, I will want to prefer an opinion on my, my brother's um, interview that he granted mm. the media, the lawyer. Mm. I know Augustine. I, we, we, we are both into private practice. Right. Uh, you see, but, but I am his senior. Mm -hmm. And this job is my mate. Uh -huh. This job, sometimes, when you are a lawyer handling a very sensitive matter like this, you yet you, yours is to defend the interest of of, of your client, right. the accused person. This is no longer a suspect; is being uh, properly charged. You must take into consideration the mood of the society of the community mm. and react accordingly. He, he ought to have preferred some, some reasons and be apologetic. That yes, some incident must have happened. But even on behalf of, they apologize to the community, to the lady. And, uh, but the criminal aspect, we'll see how the matter will, will travel in court. Right. Then, <coughs> but when you say that, it was, is, is it proper for somebody to splash pepper? On another's face, of even if not. even if it was an altercation, mm. uh, you know. So when you do that, you incite the public, the public's reaction or passion against you, even as the lawyer. When when they see you in public, there are a lot of reactions, either by way of insults or by people practically react towards you. Is it not that a bit justified that, as at that moment, um, all we are dealing with was one side of the story? And there was no other side of the story. Sir, you also know mm. that by our own code, we are right. not supposed to speak. So if you decide that as the lawyer in the matter, you intend to grant an interview, my position is that do it in a manner that you attract sympathy. But don't do it in a manner that will attract more adverse reactions towards your client. Oh, you don't speak to the facts. Oh, you don't speak to the fact. You mm. say that the matter is not properly before the court. So you, you, you reserve all comments for now. Mm. When the matter is determined and you are acquitted and or otherwise, right. then you can speak to the merits from your perspective. But the matter is here to travel. Mm. The judge handling the matter is a Ghanaian. He's a member of the society. He has relatives, or she has relatives. I don't know the gender. Mm -hmm. But the judge certainly has relatives who are friends. So you, you ought to be careful. You ought to be careful. I, I sitting here and, and listening to the interview and the way he came across, I, I, I thought that he, he, he didn't help his client in, in the matter. But it, it's happened. Now, moving to the specifics. This is a matter that has been properly um, investigated in the meantime, and a prima facie case has been mm. has been made. And in fact, the latest is that I understand that about um, four or five <coughs> persons at that uh, Abilimpe place.
have also been invited by the police. They have given statement because the lady has mentioned them. You know, he, she, she mentioned somebody as someone who asked her to sit yeah, and said we don't allow her to. Yeah, right. The mm. supervisor. Well, and I then she has spoken to other people. Yes. So they have gone called all of them. They have given their statement yes. to the police. The yeah. other shocking revelation is that the supervisor, when she uh, when he asked her mm. to wait for him to go in and get the other side of the story, she mentioned in the interview that she waited from about 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mm. I, I don't know if that is correct. So even having gone through this trauma, they still asked her, to just wait. Nobody came to to be apologetic. Not the manager, not any other colleague of the supervisor. Mm. And and it is it I think I think they did. There was there was a statement from the company. Then there was an apology from the from the accused person. Okay. Even though she says she rejects the apology. Okay. We understand because the apology appears to be qualified. It doesn't seem to admit her narration. For example, the apology suggests that all the incident happened within a space of less than an, an hour, and that cannot be true. That okay. uh, she was not. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but my point is, it had to be timeous. Right. My, what I speak of right. is right. the timeousness of the, the the show of remorse. Right. Immediately, you, somebody, not even the accused persons now, mm -hmm. but somebody, another colleague, another supervisor, or another person in management, all should have come to the lady and said, "Oh." I just heard about this matter. Right. We are sorry. Mm. But uh, whatever it is, we'll deal with it. So you calm down. Yeah, right. don't, don't show further tears. You know, something yeah, right. of that mm. sort. But if you ask her to wait for so many hours, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., that is unacceptable. Mm. And, 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 and it is matters of, of that nature that, that has so much affected her that she was, she's been assaulted. And on top of that, she, she was disregarded mm. for a long time, you know, and, and these things, they, they happen in a lot of companies. Companies manned by uh, foreigners mm. and companies also manned by persons of dual nationality in this country. Yes, occasionally we find our own um, visiting some of these uh, um, um, unfortunate incidents on, on their colleague, but it appears to be predominant among companies owned by, um, excuse my language, persons of Asian and Middle Eastern descent. And I, 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 I'm in practice, I hear them. Even sometimes the way they dismiss mm. some of these people. Okay. You know, they, they, you can be terminated. Yeah, the law says, yes, you, you, you can be dismissed when reasons are given or you can be dismissed without notice, but it had to be compensated. Okay. Sometimes they are dismissed without compensation, and they come to you, and <coughs> they want you to take the matter up. And you look at, the person is paid sometimes 100 cities. Mm. And, and, and he or she has been a casual staff for eight years. Which is wrong, you cannot Which have a casual yes. staff for, <laughs> for that After period. After six months, mm. the person, right. the, 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 the status of the weather metamorphoses into a permanent That's life. right. You know, and then unfortunately, some of our people too do not know that you don't need to pay money to go to the Labor Commission, for example, and make a complaint. Indeed. Or even legal aid. Yes. Or even legal mm -hmm. aid. So I am happy this matter has come up. Mm. It will help to check the excesses as exhibited by some of these people who obviously are contributing towards the growth of our okay. economy. Let me hear from Prof. I return to you mm -hmm. and you tell us about what you think about the, the calls, the calls for the shutdown of the company, uh, calls for um, actually the Electoral Commission Chair on the International Women's Day. It, this became a big issue on International mm -hmm. Women's Day. It became the point to make a discussion. And she suggested, for example, that uh, Labor Commission should come in, Shraj should come in. Um, I've heard uh, Clara Berry also suggests that you know she should look at uh, civil action immediately and all of that i'll come back to you to tell us what you think about that mm. prof what 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 has been your reaction to this story and what uh, our own reaction as the state and actors of state have okay. been reacting to thank you very much but before i respond to your question mm. i want to take it from where 
my brother just ended okay about the way and manner people of asian extraction mm. treat africans or blacks in general okay and i think that what we have seen in this country is the tip of the iceberg mm. perhaps most of us or most of Ghanaians are not historians who haven't read history and haven't read about the arab slave trade they do not know how or cannot appreciate how these arabs had treated our forebears in eastern africa mm. and uh, uh, Sudan and those areas mm. in the time past. Let's note though that the initial claim yeah. that this was uh, a foreign company and these people were foreigners, their foreignness is, is the, in their color, but they are Ghanaians. Yeah, Ghanaians. It's a Ghanaian yeah, company. Yeah, yes. um, yeah. I understand they, some of them born here, bred here. Yeah. I've, dealt with, I've dealt with them. Yeah, it's true. They are Ghanaians. But can the Ethiopian change? His skin. his skin, the leopard the, changes uh, can skin. Can the leopard change his skin and can Ethiopian also change his skin? It's, mm. it's, it's scriptural. Yes. They cannot change their skin. That is why I said that it is, a, it, is, it is a tip of the iceberg. It is ingrained in their DNA. Once Arab, forever Arab. And because is that fair? Is that a fair <laughs> comment you're making? <laughs> anyway. The, the lawyer, for example, was saying yeah. what I've heard uh, Boache Jaco say that this is an individual. Let's okay. deal with him mm -hmm. in okay. that direction. That Thank basis. you very much. Uh, I think I, I, I will draw that. But mm. I was going to look at it from historical perspective. Okay. How they have treated our own kit and kin in that part of the world okay. in the past. That's why I, 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 I was tempted to use that word. But mm. I will draw it. But going forward, I will say that <coughs> what I've seen and I've read and I've taught my students most of the time, we talk about the Atlantic slave trade and we lambast the Europeans, the Caucasians, for the way they treated our uh, ancestors in the past right. during the transatlantic slave trade era. Oh. But if you look at the Arab slave trade, you come to realize mm -hmm. that these people, in the case of the Atlantic slave trade, the, the whites did not go into the interior to take captives, Africans, and exported them. Mm. But if you look at it, the Arab slave trade, the Arabs themselves went into the interior. They went and then ambushed the people. In the night, they will fire fire arms or mm -hmm. fire guns. Mm. And people who have never heard about the sound of gun will be frightened and those who try to run away will be shot. They will arrest the, the young and the strong ones, the cream, the cream of the society, the old and the smaller ones who to them were useless. Some of them will be shot. The invalid, some of them will be shot and then uh, uh, <coughs> left and set their towns or villages in, uh, on fire. Mm. And then drag these people, shackle them and take them to the coast, which took so many years. And you know, when they have shipped these people to the, to the coast and even shipped them to the Arab world, sold them into slavery, the men were castrated. The girls were used as concubines. And the men became, uh, what Enochs. do you call it, Enochs. Mm. Mm. What was so heinous than this? And it is this kind of treatment tendency that had lingered on up to today. And we are seeing manifestations of it today, as this gentleman did. To me, what this gentleman did is very sad. It's inhuman. It offends the fundamental human rights of the lady. Mm. And it's an insult to all Ghanaians. Okay. Why should you treat fellow human beings created in the image of God in, 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 in such a manner, dipping his face into a prepared or a grounded pepper? Mm. for some time and nobody appeared to if you listen to the accounts of the lady herself nobody appeared to have come to her aid and even though there had been an attempt to say that oh, mm. she was attended to she was taken to a when, drugstore when, when the, the 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 accused issued yeah. an apology yeah. which uh, she rejects because it sounds qualified <laughs> uh, because in in that apology he says it was an accident that he didn't even intend it and denies that he dipped her face in and the claim also that she sat there for that long for how many hours denies all of those kind of things but he apologizes in that regard okay, okay. you are a lawyer mm. 
So you know that the case is before court. Mm. I don't have to say anything about it. But otherwise, I would have said that all these things are afterthought. Right. After the law had caught up with him, mm. they have been doing all these things and gone scot free in the past. Okay. But unfortunately for them, or for the gentleman, this time around, he met somebody who will not allow her rights to be trampled, trampled upon. upon. Mm. So the she role of the media. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so she, she told someone, mm. or she might have told someone, <coughs> the person advise her take action against the supervisor right and this time we, s we we have seen what we are seeing today okay so i think that the whole thing is bad mm. and you should not support it you should condemn it in no uncertain terms right and i must commend the ministers for their proactiveness mm. the way they have acted and if every minister from now onwards were to act this way i think the country will be making a headway forward thank you now, Honorable Kofu, like, like he says, <clears throat> he, whatever it is, he would rather believe the, the, the story of the lady than any other thing that is said by the other party. And that this is an opportunity to take and sort of clear the system of some of these uh, excesses that you find. Um, what's your take on it, particularly looking at the angle also from the ministers and their intervention and what should be done. There's actually a petition which I spoke to. There's a petition which by Wednesday had gathered over 2,000 uh, signatories for the, the, the branch to be shut down. Yes, um, it was a very unfortunate uh, incident and need to be condemned in all uh, uncertain terms. But there's something peculiar that had happened within the last two weeks or so, 10 days. Um, it seems our uh, women folk, um, I don't know what's happening. These uh, young uh, girls, <laughs> yes, these young <laughs> girls are committing suicides and uh, uh, this thing happened. And in the, in the frenzy of all that, we had the International Women's Day, of which the first lady hosted some of the celebs, uh, women celebrities. A lady alleged to be a thief in Kumasi, caught up yes. Yes. two weeks ago. Yeah. Yes, ago. yes. So, um, you ask yourself, the psyche of, the, of our society, I mean, the conscience of our society, our social norms, where are they gone to? Um, how do we see our women folk? I mean, and these are our mothers, our sisters, our wives, and all kinds of all sort of things. And yet, society seems to be uh, uh, pushing them uh, so far. What this girl had gone through, the traumatized situation, if you listen to um, uh, the interview. She said, anytime he begins to think of it, if he's like, she cries. She cries. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the things that leads to other things, including psychological tendencies of yeah. wanting to exactly. commit suicide. Exactly. She says, she says, she feel, she felt humiliated somehow. So inferiority complex sets in, and these are the things that uh, breaks down. The, 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 the strength of the inner strength of uh, individuals, particularly uh, women or girls. So it's a very, a very, very serious issue. However, I think the law is taking its course. Mm. We should, as a matter of fact, um, moderate our public uh, uh, condemnation why we allow the legal and the judicial system mm. to take place. But, but, you, but you know what, respectfully, I take the view that when matters like this, matters like the Volta secession thing, yeah. when they come up, even though they are in <coughs> court, these are not the matters that you always say, oh, the matter is in court, so yeah. <coughs> nobody should talk about no, it. No, no, no. I think these matters, they are of such public interest yes. that they should be an exception to the matters that People should not be, should talked, not be about. talked about. Yeah. Well, I agree with you, Senior, but what I'm saying, we are talking about it, right. and we are doing so freely. Mm. But... Um, you know, there's this criminal aspect to it. Right. And that's what I'm trying to... With, that's what is going on now. Yes. Mm. So, the, as for the moral and the social issues, we, we are at liberty to do so. And that okay. is what we do in justice. All right. If you go to the Constitution, mm. uh, the directive principle of the Constitution, mm. um, what is it? Article, mm. Article 30, 35, 36, yeah, 36, uh, 10. With your permission, if I may read. Go ahead. 
The state shall safeguard the health, safety, and welfare of all persons in employment and shall establish the basis for the full deployment of the creative potential of all Ghanaians. So the invite of state institutions is, is, is not only time years, but it's about something that needs to be done. The law allows it. And it's quite commendable that we have state institutions uh, promptly coming in, mm. with the gender minister herself leading the pack. Uh, I plan the employment minister has also asked uh, the Labour Commission. Yes, to, for to, a week to bring a report. To look into. Mm. And this should be an eye opener mm. for all those who, who um, um, are, are in the position of employing others yes. in, their, in their establishment. Right. Uh, you need not be colored or whatever. Mm. The fundamental uh, human rights of each and everybody needs to be respected. Mm. Okay. And Fair. in this case, particularly women, you can do this to a woman in Germany mm. and go scot free. I mean, you simply cannot. They, they, they are treated as if they are endangered species. Right. And here we are, we, we, we're doing everything. Mm. And countless occasions we've had Ghanaians uh, traveling outside Ghana, particularly to the uh, Middle East. Uh, in search of employment and the kind of treatment being meted out to them. Mm. And you listen to some of these accounts and your, your heart bleeds. So if we sit back home at our own backyard, we're yeah. experiencing some of these things, <coughs> then clearly the society has okay. a role to now play. Now briefly, before I bring in uh, Kuku, because you speak about the fact that it's a criminal process pending and all of that, um, what would you say, because she's been speaking a lot, yeah. And I don't know how the prosecution may feel about that because if you want to scrutinize, she speaks at one place, she speaks at another place, and you can put some of the statements together and you find that there may be some contradictions in the things that she says. That obviously will not be good for the prosecution. Exactly. Should she be talking? Not at all. That, that is why I wanted us to, um, not she alone, mm. but some other people around. We, you see, criminal matters, uh, you and I uh, know, has based on evidence, mm. core evidence, and contradiction can be a, a weak point uh, in the prosecution's case. So, and the more you talk, the more you give different accounts here and there. Right. And so for me, uh, it would be better that to deal with the social aspect of it, and then uh, publicly we condemn, and we leave the elements of criminality okay. to the court, uh, court of law, okay. where lawyers will be dealing with, and the prosecution will be able okay. to put up. Thank you. Uh, something. Let's hear a quick on this. Well, really, nothing much to add. I associate myself with everything that has been said here, but let's see how the law courts deal with this matter. Okay. That's what is important for, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg, mm. not just in the industrial commercial area, but sometimes mm. even in the domestic jurisdictions, okay. the way we treat house helps and things, you know. So perhaps it's good that this has been brought to the front banner mm -hmm. and if the courts will deal with it properly, it may serve as a deterrent. Okay. But maybe a very, very, very small window we are seeing. Mm. Could be bigger than that. Okay. And I said I would return to you to ask about the other legal aspect that's being raised. Um, <coughs> like Kweku says, and we, we acknowledge that the ministers have been there. The Labour Minister goes there and says that the Labour Department should go and do some checks. Must it take some of these things because you know the law, yeah. the, the inspectorate division, yes. <laughs> they are supposed to be going around and doing these checks anyway. Yeah. Must it take some of these things for this to happen? And do you also uh, subscribe to what, what advice would you give her because she's being asked to yes. take a civil uh, yes, process. Uh, some say she should go to Labour Commission and also go to Shraj. Uh, first, my advice uh, at, uh, to her mm. will be that she should stop talking and allow the matter to proceed in court. Because, you see, the court will be placing probative value, what we call probative value, mm. on the evidence, the testimony that she will grant in court. Okay. Under oath. That's for now, it's not under oath. So, but the, 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 the lawyers for the accused persons right. will be fishing for some of these contra contradictory Dictions, statements. Yeah. Mm. 
But, but in any case, prosecution can still say, mm. you know, they will have a way of dealing with it. So, okay. But I want to speak to the call by the the other other stakeholders that the company be shut down. Not at all. There's no basis to demand that the company be shut down. There's no legal basis. It is an. So oh, there were actually some attacks on on them, and they were forced I, to close the, down. You see, that is why I said mm. that as a lawyer, when you are in the matter, speak in such a way that you don't attract adverse reaction from the society. Okay. I, I, I'm sure if they had acted timely in a remorseful manner, I don't think people will still be patronizing them. Okay. But you see, they are contributing towards the economic growth of this country. They, are, they have a, they, there are a lot of Ghanaians who have been employed by It's a chain of restaurants. Yeah, they say they have over chain. 300 uh, <coughs> employees. Good. But I know they are dotted in neighborhoods in Accra. Mm. So we must be careful be, because from the economic perspective, they are playing their role. Why must we be careful? Because we want to use this as an example. That's what, but the, you don't that's kill what the, the commentary is. No, you don't kill. You can sue. The, the civil action can be taken mm. in civil damages okay. against the company. Mm. I agree. If you establish it, the, the consequential orders by the court will be granted. Okay. For the relief, depending on the relief you'll be asking. Mm. But to kill, to shut down the company mm. will have economic consequences. Not for the found owners of the company, but for other Ghanaians who are employees who are another and even people the as a whole yes who are, we will lose taxes from there so let's be careful you know it will be too extreme too harsh to say that because of this incident um the company which is a legal entity which exactly. is independent of this individual exactly. should be shut down you know, it, it, it for me, for me, where I sit. How will that lawyer, example you are seeking to exact on this issue be felt? Civil action. Okay. But Civil action. Sh sh should she do it now? Why not? Okay. But both can run in tandem. Concurrently. Right? Yes, mm. concurrently. They can run in tandem. Okay. I mean, she should seek legal advice regarding the nature of the evidence mm. and the circumstances. Okay. And but let her pursue it. Okay. But, but counsel, going after the uh, company, for me, has no basis, just as uh, senior said. This is an individual who committed some kind of crime. So he must be dealt with in his capacity as an individual. Okay. The company is a legal entity. The company can be sued and can sue. So mm. if, in any case, the, the, the lady or the victim thinks mm. that the company uh, uh, ought to have um, uh, done something to protect her interest hey, right. and the company vicarious liability yes. exactly uh -huh. so that that one uh, she can go after the company in a civil action right to close it down does not solve the problem otherwise just as uh, senior said mm. we may go into uh, uh, domestic houses and other uh, <laughs> establishment and okay. closing down people's homes and all those things <laughs> okay. so these things are going on <laughs> okay uh, okay thank you thank you uh, uh, very much and um i have had the opportunity of speaking to getting to you know meet meet the two individuals involved um uh, my firm has done some work for the company involved and in fact initially from the initial stages i accompanied the accused to the police for the initial processes for him to be granted bail until later on the bail was revoked and then he was put in there we'll take a break when we return we will be doing some history is the history of ghana being distorted and for what purpose? And again, we'll go and look at the questions of treason being slapped on some members of the Volta region or those who say they belong to the Western Togoland. We'll be right back. <laughs> 